you guys <laughs> trying to get we need like a studio <laughs> we need a little studio set up with monitors i just want to um be able to see like when the camera looks like and stuff there we go that's a lot better this is like no no that's not better i'm relocating um good morning everybody good morning um, it's Happy Friday. It's Friday. Hooray. We all made it to Friday. Yeah, Friday. We're all still here. Um. Hi, Remy. Oh, yes, goodness. Um, I hope you guys are all doing well. So I was looking at my calendar yesterday and noting everybody's heat cycles. And um I was looking at where I have Myra's due date, and um, I had seven weeks written down right there. And so I was like, wait a minute, is she only seven weeks at that date? And so I'm not even sure why I wrote due date seven weeks, because the dog's gestation in general is about 63 days, and it can range, um, they say Ooh. the general range from there is about 60 to 67 days. Um, but our Cavaliers have never gone past 60 days. Um, and in fact, they're usually, um, they usually well right around like 56, between 56 and 58 days. And so we calculate their due dates for eight weeks since eight weeks is 56 days. Um, and so I don't know if I was getting like that eight week mark confused because, um, um, usually call we call it like due week because because they the canine gestation overall can be um another week and so going past that due date by up to a week really isn't that concerning um and so a we'll lot times call it the due week because sometimes moms will go four days past like i said we've had mom go to 60 days um and so we like to know where we're in that week and so i don't know if i was thinking that the, we cut off that one week and go down to seven weeks. I don't know what I was thinking, but um, so I did a little bit of recalculation. And so we have her, we had her at March 16th. And so, um, and I had initially bumped her back to the 16th from the 15th, but I looked at some photos that I took. And um, now with some like distance from her heat cycle and like the matings we did and when her symptoms started cropping up. Um, Drew and I were kind of able to pinpoint better where we think she ovulated and everything fertilized. Um, and so we're giving her a due date of March 21st. So it's gonna be, we're still a week off, but not a whole week. We're basically still that, that day where I decided to back her up. We're gonna undo that backup. Um, and so we're gonna put her on March 21st for her due date. So um, that helps us breathe a little bit because there's some things where we really wanted to um, get this trip in. We it's really difficult for us to travel because we have all the dogs, and um, and so a few weeks ago or maybe like a month ago, um, we had the idea of taking the kids to like a nice hotel that has a pool and the breakfast and just take them for the weekend. Um, but close enough that Drew and I can, you know, come to and from home to take care of the dogs, um, and, and turn on the live stream and, you know, all that stuff. And, um, and then we have the live stream to watch the dogs. Um, keep an eye on them. And, Sorry. um, we were stuck, we want to do it before Myra has her puppies because it's going to be, we can't do that when, once Myra has her puppies. Um, we like to be available 24 seven to the babies. Um. And so that gives us one more week that we can do that because we were thinking that we had to get that done by the 16th. So um, that gives us another six days. So that's good. Um, but I am really excited for this trip. I think it's going to be really good for the kids. We wanted to, we feel like um, they really, they really deserve to get away out of the house, kind of away from the dogs, away from, um, YouTube, the live stream, just like get away from it all. 
um, for a few days and just get away from life too, you know, somewhere that, you know, drama and stuff doesn't follow them, you know, like with school, all that stuff just follows them home, you know, usually. So hopefully it'll be a good time to really help them unplug and just play and have fun. So, um, but I think we found a hotel and I think we, we're going to be able to make it work. And so having that extra six days is really going to help. Um, and so probably going to do it during the week. Um, but we'll still have the live stream on because Drew and I will be coming to and we'll be going to and from. So um, we'll take turns to make sure that um, somebody's here. Um, oh, and I apologize for the, the time um, switching up the live streams. The camera needed to be charged on the kitty stream. And so, um, and so we decided just, instead of making you guys wait, we just decided to start the stream, let that camera charge for a minute. Um, but um, I did want to give you that little bit, that update about Myra. Um, this morning, oh my gosh, when I was getting the picture of the spike and the kitties, um, so everybody had just eaten and I let Spike out of his crate to um, to get a picture of him with the kitties. Macchiato was barking and so I decided to let him out of his crate and put him outside. But I let him out of his crate and I go to put him outside and realize the girls are outside and since we've got um, some heat, he can't go outside. So I brought him, you know, back over and he was being really friendly with the kitties and so I let him just be with the kitties. Spike, they're both getting along. Everything was great. And, um, Macchiato, he, I was surprised at how gentle he was being with the kitties. And Spike was on the couch, and the thumbnail that I have for the kitties was kind of, you know, when all this was taking place. He was being really good. He was watching Macchiato, like, the whole time we were taking photos. And then, out of nowhere, Spike just flew off the couch, and um, I looked over, and Macchiato was starting to get a little carried away with the kitty, and Spike was very protective of the cats. As soon as he thought that Macchiato was going too far with the cat, he he took it very personally. And um, I've never seen him do that before. Whenever the dogs have like ganged up on the cats, it's always been like together. Like Rio and Spike used to do that quite a bit. In fact, like just a couple of weeks ago, that, that was an issue. And, um, but the, what they do is it's like they both they both want to play and then the two of them together can kind of corner the cat and then the cat gets kind of afraid. But they get, um, it looks really aggressive and we still aren't sure if they're being aggressive or if they're trying to play. But either way, they're not fighting with each other. And, um, and but this time when Spike saw Macchiato starting to play, starting to get a little more rough with the cat, Instead of going over and like joining him to play, instead he knocked him off the cat and gave him a few, gave him a piece of his mind. Um, so it was a very, it was a very different um, dynamic than what we're used to. And so I think that kind of speaks to how much Spike is bonded with the cats. Um, Spike feels very protective of them. And so it's not just in the yard anymore. Now it's in the house and it's like even with the other dogs. Um, but he was also, he was being very fair, too. It's not like he was just upset with Macchiato being with the cats. Because when Macchiato was being good with them, um, Spike just let him, he let him play. He let them lick them. He let them, um, like, walk up to them and sniff them. And um, he let them, you know, like, nose around them and sniff their butts and, um, you know, like, kind of get between their legs. And, you know, like, he let them touch at them and get physical. Um, he just, he only came down and separated them when, um, Macchiato was, um, it's really hard to describe the behavior, but it's like, like they start sniffing them really hard. I, it's really odd. Um, and they sniff them really hard and they like scoop them with their noses at the same time. And so the cats don't like it. Um, that's why it's hard to tell if they're playing or if they're just being bullies. Um. But, uh, so I rescheduled the kitty stream for 1215. Where's my phone? I wanted to look up that website again and see if there were any more 
good headlines because yesterday I pulled up, I found this website of Happy Dog News, which is my phone. Where did it go? Have you seen my phone? Oh, wait, it's on the charger because it was about to too. Hi there, Shelly. Oh, I'm going to say good afternoon now. It's, it's, at least at our time, it's afternoon. Diana, good evening to you and um, Kelly and Brenda and Enrico. Enrico. Sue, good afternoon to you and Audrey. I love you, Audrey. I hope you're doing well, sweetie pie. Daisy doesn't like me talking sweet to other dogs. <laughs> Hi there, Lisa. Good evening to you. Is it evening? I guess it's six o'clock. It's evening time, your turn. <laughs> Drew even noticed this pattern of in the morning Remy getting to be the dominant one and then they trade. Swap, swap up. But she's Louise, Ron. Ron's like, no, it's my turn now. <laughs> my turn. All right, I want to find this. Robin. Website. Robin. Robin. No. Robin. No. Yes. Animals. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are. Positive dog news. I thought you said the. Yeah, but I had to adjust the settings on my phone to auto delete tabs after they've been open for 24 hours because they were just compiling and compiling and then I had like 200 tabs. Oh, really? You're, 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 yeah, and so my tab is gone now. Endless tab? Well, why don't you make a bookmark? Because I never need to do that. <laughs> leave endless tabs open. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Would you like help in setting up a bookmark? Oh, I we talked about the bulldog puppy that spontaneously regrew part of its jaw, right? Yes. yes. Oh. Okay, that's this is the website. Wait. Yeah. I think it did. Robin, you look very Oh, okay. This happened in November, right around Thanksgiving. Garbage man saves kitten from being crushed, now adopted and healthy in time for Christmas. Oh, it's a little white kitten. Oh, man. Seconds away from being crushed in a garbage truck, a snow white kitten has found a new home in time for Christmas after being saved by the driver. The two day old feline was found weighing just 93 grams. Oh my goodness. Less than Three a tangerine ounces. when a quick thinking garbage man heard his tiny meows and fished him out of the trash that was being dumped and compacted in his truck. Aww. Arriving at Blue Cross Animal Hospital, his coloration and his birth so near the most wonderful time of the year earned him the name Tiny Tim. Aww. Tiny Tim needed to be hand fed every two hours and with his eyes not yet open as a newborn. He was kept in an incubator for warmth. Oh. Following his brush with death, Tiny Tim was able to find a loving new home with another Blue Cross rescue kitten named Oski, the sole survivor from his litter. I'm so glad I brought him to Blue Cross. What an amazing job the team has done, said the refuse collector. Three-legged Oski had his hind leg amputated after oh. an infection. Best friends were both adopted by Laura Morris, who works for the Blue Cross. Poor thing. I can't believe he'd been put in the bin. He's so cute and lovely. You guys got to see a picture of this kitty when he was little. Hi. So there he is when he's no, no. little. She's getting pets from me. You really is Snow White. Hi, Robin. And there he is older. Your fur is getting so beautiful, Robin. How sweet is he? Oh, there we go. Focus. 
Oh, hello, Pom Pom. Hi. Did you horn in? Yeah, Hi, you Amber. Thanks for joining us. Hornringer. This hornringer. Hi there, Kristen. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Hi, Cynthia. Oh. I hope you guys are having a good afternoon. I'm on the camera. You want us to set up an OnlyFans page for you? There, oh, Robin? goodness. <laughs> Only canines. <laughs> Only canines. Hi. Catching criminals just became a lot easier thanks to new method for analyzing cat hair. Now this one I'm looking at because look at the picture of that cat. Look how pretty that cat is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Isn't yeah. that cat pretty? Hi. Dog. I want a kitty like I want a kitty that looks like this. We have four kitties. We do not need a cat like that. Calico. I know it's a calico, but we already have a uh, Pandora looks very similar. No, Pandora looks nothing like it. Oh my gosh, look at her cool picture. Oh wow, that's pretty good. Yeah. There are some people who will say that for home defense, you're better off having a dog. Well, it turns out almost every cat has a unique DNA mutation detectable in their hair, and it's offering CSI detectives an almost surefire way to put criminals at the scene of their crimes or their homes, provided there was a cat there. What? Anyone who, of course, has a cat will know that it's almost impossible to get out of their house without cat hair stuck somewhere in their clothes. Ah. Thanks to an innovative DNA analysis technique developed at the University of Leicester, this has already been used to place a murderer at, see that word on YouTube, Ugh. at the scene of, um, I don't know why you're... the leader. I like the word delete. Uh, I don't delete yeah, I haven't seen anybody use that word yet, so I like delete. Um, at the scene of their cat. <laughs> While any perpetrator will take pain. Okay, so let me read that sentence since it was. Um, thanks to an innovative DNA analysis technique developed at the university, this has already been used to place a deleter at the scene of their cat. While any perpetrator will take pains to not leave any of his own DNA behind, it's unlikely that a burglar rummaging through your home possessions will be able to avoid every last strand of cat hair. Hair shed by your cat lacks the hair root, so it contains very little usable DNA said Emily Patterson, the lead author of the study. In practice, we can only analyze mitochondrial DNA, which is passed from mothers to their offspring and is shared among maternally related cats. Patterson and her team, however, have now increased by tenfold the detail with which they can analyze the mitochondrial DNA. And because virtually every cat has a rare DNA type, the test will almost certainly be informative if hairs are found. The team tested the method in a lost cat case. According to the University Press, or DNA from the skeletal remains of a missing female cat could be matched with DNA from hair from her surviving male offspring. Jesus. In criminal cases where there is no human DNA available to test, pet hair is a valuable source of linking evidence. I've heard of that before, like finding like certain, like they would they would match like the colors of it. Yeah, I've heard of that. Um, and our method makes it much easier, much more powerful. Uh, the same approach could also be applied to other species, in particular dogs. Even while they were developing New technique Patterson and her team used it in a previous uh, deletion case to identify the. It's so funny because it's like even even uh, deleters so the, they so have pets that love so them the, traditionally. Isn't that crazy? So the perpetrator has he owned, brought, owned a cat and brought the hair. Yes, yeah, so the hair traveled on clothes uh, and then it comes it, off it, it while it was the there. Scene. Yeah, uh, and so true. his his cat. Places him at the scene of the crime. How do they figure out the like? How do they like? Well, they the, collected at the they collected at the crime scene, okay. and then right. But then, how do you? Well, if they have a suspect. Oh, I guess if they have a suspect. They go and they get the. And they're like, yeah, yeah, they go and. Huh. Oh, girl hatches a quail from a supermarket egg. What? And now has a devoted pet. Oh my. A 13-year-old girl hatched a quail from a supermarket egg and now hopes the bird might start its own family? Uh, Zara calls the affectionate fowl her best friend after she reared him from an egg purchased at the local grocery store in England. For months, she had begged her mother to try an incredible project she had heard about online about how a shopper had managed the same feat with a duck egg. Mrs. Sutcliffe eventually relented and bought her a box of Clarence Court quail eggs. Even though her husband had insisted the family couldn't have any more animals. <laughs> Typical father. That's not too bad. 
At the store, Zara had a choice between chicken and quail eggs, and she loved how small the quail eggs were. After three weeks of warming and nurturing the egg, Zara hatched pebbles at her suburban home outside of Manchester and began raising him in her bedroom. It was exciting, but also scary, because you always wonder if you're going to do anything wrong, said the teen. Mom Claire recalls that she was checking them, and she said, I think, she's, I think one's got one in it. When they did hatch, they ended up in her bedroom, so she had them in a mesh dog crate with a heater, a brooding lamp, and he ended up living in her room for weeks. When she goes to the cage, Pebbles lifts his bum up in the air. That's what they do when they're excited, and he gets giddy and runs up and down. Aww. That is hilarious. That's so funny. He was, like, he was on he was destined- deletion row. Yeah. He was he was he- destined for somebody's stove. Yeah, he was destined for a delicious omelet. So, what, so you... So is the theory then that there's a lot more fertilized eggs going to the supermarket than people are aware of? That must be it. Because why would they even have the, why would roosters even have access? Well, I thought like that was, I thought there was some, something like. Well, they have to breed some of them. For the... But how, I would feel, I feel like though the process would make it, would make it difficult for. A, you have to look up what the process for bread, is. For fertilized eggs to get mixed up with grocery store eggs. I mean, wouldn't it? Oh. It sounds like this is a lot of this is from England. This so, is from England, yeah. So and I know that over in England, like our some, UK um, viewership is going to have to chime in yeah. on how your grocery store stuff works. Well, and not that, but. Uh, like, how does this happen? Or maybe your eggs are supplied by like a lot of small farmers? Yeah. Is that how it works? Well, I know that over in England, you can, uh, you can buy like raw yeah. milk. Uh, so oh, so maybe she went to like one of those specialty places that has like well, it's not especially like I think you can no, the... I'm saying it has to be, but they have like the specialty where it's, it's not the stuff that everybody buys for their <laughs> consumption, but it's the all natural, maybe no interference yeah, maybe. type of eggs. Well, like even like here, he the... said it was like some project. Well, like here in here in the states, you we can't buy raw milk. In grocery stores at all, everything has to be pasteurized. But over there, you can get an incredible money. project she heard about online about how a shopper had managed the yeah. same feet with duck egg. What's the project? Because it has to be fertilized. Yeah, that's, I guess what you, that's what you have to look up is how does that work? How to hatch an egg from the supermarket? supermarket. You hatch chicks from grocery store eggs. Some articles suggest this is possible and that fertilized eggs are quite common. There you go. I've read that people have done it from Trader Joe eggs. Blech. Don't we have Trader Joe eggs? Uh, or we did. Uh, we did at one point, yeah. Here goes Trader Joe's. It was in uh, uh, Florida. Florida. So he says certain U.S. brands will actually hatch. You have to look for the free range and heritage labels. Uh, they are normally expensive and are a mix of brown, green, and blue eggs. Yep. So yeah, that's that's kind of what I said. It was like yeah. the the unrestricted, the more yeah, more free range. Um, there was a trend last year of people on social media hatching out the brand Happy Eggs. I don't know why or how they had success, but it seemed like folks would at least get a few to hatch out of a dozen. Crazy. Oh wait, somebody somebody says that's a PR campaign they did use they quoting happy eggs Um, using social media to promote their brand after their disgusting operations were exposed. Sounds a bit like a an extremist there. Yeah. That sounds like one of those people that says that you need to get your milk ultra pasteurized. Because they're also the same people who are also against the GM. <laughs> they're against all the yeah. processes that you're in there. Somebody says, yes, you can hatch. From 48 eggs, I have five little quails. Dang. That's Somebody it. said, yesterday, nine out of the 18 I incubated hatched. Jeez, I did not think they were fertilized, and candling never worked for me. I just kept adding water to the humidifier and was surprised with noise from the incubator yesterday. Like another comment said, chicken are probably not going to be fertilized, but it's less common to keep quails for eggs. Uh, so if you do find them, they're probably from smaller farms that don't really separate the males and they might be fertilized. 
Oh, bingo, that's kind of what I said. Yeah, that's kind of what I said. Somebody else says I hatched one out of 10 or 12 from a grocery store. Can we get chickens yet? We can just go up the road to buy yeah, some yeah. chicks. Yeah, once we get the, uh, the barn and everything cranked up, we'll do that. Yeah. Make a nice, nice thing. Make a nice, uh, thing about the barn. Aw, Chicago Marathon runner rescues a stray kitten during the race and a bystander gives it a home. Aw, she's... Aw. Oh, and it's such a cute little kitten. Look at... Oh, dang, that is a cute little, little meow meow. Aw. All right, let's see. Chicago Marathon runner gave up a record finish in order to save a stray kitten she found on the course. The story got sweet, sweeter when, amid the spectators on the side of the road, she found Andrea Maldonado, who called out that she would give the kitten a new home. Huh. Marathoner Sarah Bowen was on track for a personal bus when she made a mid-race decision that showed her sponsor's paused Chicago they had backed the right runner. Oh, it, that's, it's, that's awesome. That sounds like, almost sounds like a <laughs> setup. Yeah, that, it does kind of sound like a setup because Pause Chicago, they do, um, <clears throat> once a month, Pause Chicago does like free spay and neuter clinics, or maybe it's not free. It's for like ten dollars. It's really, really cheap. Um, but at least it, that's how it was when I was living in Chicago about, geez, like fifteen years ago. Now <laughs> things probably changed a little. Um, but it's something that they did do. I don't know if they do it still, but um, there's Pause Chicago. There's other um, Pause locations, but they're a really awesome um, shelter rescue group, and they do a lot of like community stuff, like free. Spay Free or discounted spay neuters. Um, ditching the record, Bowen stopped when, within arm's length of her place near the side of the road during the 2023 Chicago Marathon, she saw a tiny white face huddled under a pile of leaves. Aww. There was always a chance that the athlete might have to put might have put the little fellow down and hoped its mama would show up to take him away by the scruff of the neck. But with two rescue cats of her own at home, it was a slim one. She instead decided to walk the rest of the course, gently nuzzling the one-pound kitten until she ran into a friend and fellow animal lover, Gia Negro. Ne That's what it says. And I G R O. That's what it says. Who helped Bowen try to find someone amid the crowds of onlookers to take the kitten off their hands so they could finish. That's when they came past a barber shop in the Pilsen neighborhood of Chicago and found a family group gathered there. We were there, we were on the sidelines having fun. We're called the mom of four. And all of a sudden this girl came up to me with a kitten. You guys have to see this photo. Pause Chicago, the rescue organization that Bowen was running to raise money for, posted on Instagram that they were looking to reach um, Maldonado to offer free vet services as a thank you for supporting their runner and the stray kitty. Maldonado was informed of their offer and took them up, bringing in a little fellow for an examination. Although underweight, he was given a clean bill of health after receiving vaccinations, a microchip, and a flu tip treatment. Yeah. Casper, as he is now called in his home with Maldonado, um, was the subject of more than 350 media stories in more than a dozen languages. Jeez Louise. Wow. And she finished the marathon at three hours, 33 minutes. All right. You guys got to see this adorable little kitten. Look at that cutie. Let's see if it'll focus. Not focusing on the dogs. Here, let me do a different picture. That looks like the family with the kitty. Oh. And the kitty's got a, a little boy to love, a little toddler. And there he is being handed over at the race. What are uh, Robin and Missy? Oh, Myra. Myra and Daisy have been getting super close since Myra's been sleeping in bed with us. She and Daisy are, um, Daisy's making a friend. She's finally being nice to somebody. 
Oh. Orphaned cat surprises new caregivers when they discover she has two noses. What? She's called Nanny McPhee. Ooh, it is a strange looking kitty. <laughs> a unique cat with a huge nose has stunned her new caregivers at an animal shelter in England. Feline is named Nanny McPhee after the fictional film character and was given to Cats uh. Protection Adoption Center in Warrington, Cheshire, after her owner's ill health meant they could no longer care for her. Staff at first thought she just had a large nose, but a checkup by vets revealed the four, four-year-old Moggy, Moggy? Howdy. Howdy. actually had two noses. It is, it is believed to be one-of-a-kind second schnoz was caused by a congenital abnormality. The black and white cat has suffered no ill effects from it. Kind of like Nemo's. Nemo's little our, our puppy that we had, Nemo, um, was born with a lobster claw mal- malformation. And he was perfectly healthy otherwise. He just had, um, one was worse than the other. He had a very minor one on one side and pretty more significant. Um, he largely just walks on the three feet, three legs. Um, but it was a similar sort of thing where when we looked it up there, we had never seen, a, there was no cases of a dog having that malformation. Oh, jeez Louise, you got a little, uh, a little business going on next to you, for the race. Oh yeah, I'm jeez used to it. It was deep. Daisy. 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 Here's a picture of the kitty. It does look like a cat with a giant schnoz. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It almost looks like a Photoshop. It does. It does look like a Photoshop. Wait, Missy, can I have my seat back? Aw, driver stops train to rescue frightened pug before a massive tearful reunion with owners. Oh, man whose dog ran away while he was in a coma is reunited thanks to strangers on the internet. When he was in a coma? Yeah. Oh, my. Waking up from a coma, a man was devastated when he learned his dog had gotten lost. Can you imagine, yeah, like, dude. just waking up, realizing that all that's gone on and your dog is gone? Oh, man. Wait, go away, ads. There we go. Um, but his luck turned around after the help from a local dog rescue organizer. Bubba Nulish was hospitalized with a bacterial infection and put into an induced coma on April 18th of last year. After waking from his coma three weeks later, he was desperate to see his four-year-old dog, Bullet. Oh, what a Bullet. cute name, Bullet. Bullet. <laughs> However, while still in the hospital, Bubba received a call to tell him his beloved pooch had gone missing from his home in Grand Prairie, Texas. On the suggestion of some of the hospital nurses, he immediately took to Facebook and asked for help in lost pet groups in the hopes someone had spotted Bullet in the area. He had adopted Bullet after being forced to retire from his truck driving job for medical reasons in October 2015 and says the dog pulled him out of a deep depression. As it happened, someone had seen him, 43-year-old Kim Joppy, who runs a dog rescue in Dallas. Bullet had made it to Joppy's rescue center. What are the odds that a dog gets lost and happens to find in, its way to a dog rescue? In Texas. <laughs> that's so, that's crazy. <laughs> that is some luck when you're, so your owner is in a coma and you get lost. I'm thinking about this from the dog's perspective. Your owner's in a coma, so not at home. You're probably confused, and you get out. You don't know where to go, and so you find your way to a dog rescue. Well, you, you, you probably got picked up, and then... No, it says... Um, I, don't think he, I don't think he was, like, wandering, and then... You don't think he got picked up by, like, animal control, and then they put him at the shelter? It says, as it had happened, someone had seen him, 43-year-old Kim Joppy, who runs a dog rescue in Dallas. Bullet had made it to Joppy's rescue center on June 4th. 
that after she learned who he belonged to, she stepped up to make sure he was back at Boa's side. That's not very clear, but yeah, not very clear, right? And it could be either way. That I is think. crazy, though. That, yeah, yeah, that at least. Neutered and microchipped, Joppy drove the dog out to Bubba and was delighted with what happened after she arrived. When they were reunited, I can't describe the pure emotion that came from him, said Kim. They were so bonded, it was beautiful, and I've never seen anything like it. Aww. Bubba adopted Bullet after some friend's dog had a litter of puppies. The people I was staying with at the time had a dog who had babies. One of them wouldn't leave my side ever, said Bubba. I don't know why, but he started hanging out with me, so I adopted him. Aww. He was my reason to keep on going. He really helped me through emotionally and brought me so much happiness and joy. Him being gone was the hardest part of waking up. Aww. Oh, speaking of dog, he's one of the boys out. No, girl. Do you guys want to see a picture of Bullet and his owner? There is a picture of Bullet and his owner. There's only one photo. It's the best photo. Or it's the only photo. That's the only photo. Oh, oh, this is another good one. After her dog died, 100 year old was sad and quiet until her daughter finds Gucci, an adoptable senior chihuahua. Oh, melt my heart. After a 100-year-old Californian lost her beloved dog, the sad and quiet senior was cured of her melancholy by the introduction of a senior chihuahua. Without letting her advanced age stand in the way of her love for dogs, Johanna Carrington, originally from Germany, explained to her daughter Debbie she was looking to get collared once more, but Debbie was worried she didn't have mobility to care for a dog. Fortunately for Johanna, a special animal shelter in San Francisco had a unique Seniors for Seniors adoption program to help senior citizens enjoy the mental health benefits of animal companionship by adopting out senior dogs and cats. A little chihuahua named Nachi with a reserved personality and no teeth was available at Muttsville Shelter after being rescued from a dog hoarding situation and seemed the perfect fit for her mom. After assurances from Joanna's caregiver, Eddie, that he would take the still active pooch for walks, Nachi's name was changed to something equally Italian, Gucci, and brought to his new home. After she lost her other dog, it was sad here, Debbie Carrington told Today Show Den Reader. It was quiet and sad, and then Gucci brought Joy into the house, the house again, laughing about him running around and doing funny things, and then also him sleeping on her lap while, with her while she's in her recliner or sleeping in her bed. It's just making her very happy. Johanna, who is due to celebrate her 101st birthday with Gucci in a few days, couldn't have couldn't have a dog as a child growing up in an orphanage in war-torn Germany. Uh, having never touched a cigarette nor a drop of alcohol, she attributes her many years to being surrounded by animals, including at one point eight Pekingeses. He came to the house like he'd been here before. It was remarkable, she said. He saw me sitting on my chair, jumped up on me, and sat on my lap. He made himself very, very comfortable. He was just our baby right away. She showers him with oodles of toys and gives him back massages while they watch TV at night. Aww. Oh. She grew up in Germany during the war. Oh, jeez. Okay, now you guys gotta see the picture of this one. <laughs> Don't read too many of them. Let's see if there's some. There's lots of them. Are right. Um... Cutie Pie really has like claimed that hammock. I know. She, when I was done doing photos, she like perched herself back up there. Back up she there. only came down for photos. She, she must have been up there the whole time because uh, when I went out there to let the boys out, she, uh, go ahead. There's, there's the pictures of the 101 year old Johanna. And I'm, they didn't say how old the Chihuahua is. He's just they just said he's a senior. Too bad they didn't give his age. A Chihuahua? And she named some Gucci. Oh, I love it. Gucci. The Gucci Chihuahua. Ay Chihuahua. Alright, I'm gonna do this one more very lighthearted one and then we'll go start the kitty cam. This one is titled These Breeds Were Named America's Most Spoiled Dogs in a New Poll. Ah oh, boy. Do you own an Australian Shepherd, 
border collie or corgi. Mm. According to a new poll, you might just own America's most despoiled dogs. A full 60% of the 2,000 dog owners, 2,000 is such a small sample uh, of small. dog owners. When you think about how many families have dogs. 2,000 um, and they all have a dog. At least one. So a full 60% of the 2,000 dog owners surveyed swear that they own the world's most spoiled dog. One common link, two-thirds of them are talking about a herding dog like the three named above. Huh. Non-sporting dogs like Bulldogs, Boston Terriers, and Shiba Inus came in second place for the nation's most luxuriated breeds. Hmm. But see, this is also self-reporting. Yeah, it sounds like it's very And so I'm curious to know, like, those who are, like, kind of self-centered and spoil their dogs, if they're attracted to a certain breed, are they accurately reporting how spoiled they're making their dog? So there's that to consider, too. Yeah, very subjective. Um, anyway, um, earning 64% of the vote. In third place, with 59%, are terrier breeds like Russell Terriers, Scottish Terriers, and Staffordshire Terriers. Oh, Staffies, they're so cute. They are so sweet. Oh, they're so pretty. Similarly, 79% of herding dog owners claimed their dogs live like royalty at home. So Border Collies is what I grew up with. We trained them. We did dog sports, fly ball, and agility with them. And our Border Collies, we, I can't see how people spoil them because they're so intelligent that you have to be really, they have to be trained really well and you have to be really strict with them. You you cannot let them get away with anything because if you give them an inch, they will take several miles. And they figure out like, they figure out how you're trying to stop them from doing things and then they reverse engineer it. Um, they're just, they're too intelligent for their own good. And so it's really hard for me to picture them being so spoiled or like the owners seeing that, I don't know. But we also, I, we also had, working bread border collies so there's that too um an overwhelming majority 96 percent said they spoil their pets in a wide variety of ways what does that mean though i like details details what is this wide variety of ways what does the, that mean the devil's in the details is 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 a big bed in the kitchen spoiling i don't <laughs> think so but some people might consider it spoiling well, I feel like if we have them in the kitchen right here, the least we can do is give them some cozy spots to lay down. Um, 37% treat their dogs so well they take the chance to switch bodies with their pups for a day if they could. I would do that too. I would switch, I would yeah. switch positions with Daisy for a day. Heck yes. I'd probably do it for more than a day. <laughs> People's penchant for giving their dogs a life of luxury can be explained by four and five who treat and talk to their dogs as if they were human. <laughs> guilty. We are both guilty. Uh, many talk to them as if they were children. Also guilty. And others speak as if they were babies or adults. Also guilty. Yeah. And there's only 18% for that one. Yep. Many dogs get treated to meals being prepared by hand in the kitchen. Hey! <laughs> Commissioned by Solid Gold and conducted by one poll, the random double opt-in survey found two-thirds of terrier owners love. At least find that there's no spaniels in here. Well, aren't those sporting dogs? Yeah, yeah, I guess spaniels are sporting dogs. Hunting is sporting. Commissioned by Solid Gold and conducted by one poll, the random double opt-in survey found two-thirds of terrier owners love giving their dogs extra treats throughout the day, while 29% of toy breed owners, so small dogs, um, love to serve their pups the finest bottled or filtered water in their bowl. A third of women, I didn't know that was a thing. A third of women, 32%, admit they likely treat their dogs more luxuriously than themselves. And another third treat them better than their kids and significant others, 16%. Most of us will make the claim our dog is the most spoiled dog, but there's a clear trend pointing towards smaller breeds as being the most doted on. Ah, I, that's a much better way to put it, I think. Ahead of Mother's Day, the survey also revealed that dog mom, the dog mom persona honored by 75% of women surveyed. Robin, pom pom. Um, they believe dog moms should be celebrated on Mother's Day just as much as human moms. We celebrate all of our doggy moms. Especially if we have puppies over Mother's Day. The only challenge with that is trying to convince their fur babies, so accustomed to being spoiled themselves, to turn the tables and deliver extras of love and affection for their dog moms on Mother's Day. Dog moms. 
What to do if you wake up as your dog? Dog child. 47% say play all day long. 42% sleep in until noon. 37% said sleep where I usually don't sleep. 34% said beg humans to play with me. 32% said bark at strangers. 32% said roll around in the nearest patch of grass. 32% said chew on my favorite toy. 29% said demand to be carried everywhere. 23% said beg for pets. And 22% said get as dirty as possible. Oh, child. Ah, that was a fun one. All right, now I'm going to save this website. Bookmark it. Yeah, whatever. Help. Yeah. Can I just like. Oh. Oh, and bookmark. Yep. Whatever name you want. And okay, so we're going to call this. Um, Happy Hound Headlines. Triple H. Triple H. H. Happy Hound Headlines. My real doggy, you're such a good girl. Oh my goodness, that little belly is growing. Give her another week and it's going to start popping. It'll be popping. It'll be popping. It'll be popping. All right, I bet the um, phone is charged up enough to turn on the kitty cam. Oh no, is it? Did I, did I fuzzy it up? Oh no. No. By bringing the camera close. Oh God, no! But it wasn't for very long. I think it's focused on her. Come here, you. Better? No. Better. 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 Seriously? How did that happen? We're going to start the kitty cam and um, we'll restart this one. Yeah, if it doesn't clear up by the time we're done with the kitty cam, we'll restart this one. Oh, hi there, Kingdom Within. Thank you for joining us. No dogs. All right, let's go do the kitty cam real quick. And then we'll come back and we will restart this one to have a clear picture.
Hey everybody, so we're going to, I'm going to end this stream uh, right now because the it's just so blurry, it's, it can't be any good for you guys, I'm so sorry. Um, but uh, so we have the redirect set up, so just hang tight, don't, don't do anything. I'm going to end uh, this video, um, this video feed. And if you just hang tight then like two seconds, it's gonna give you the, you know, ready to join or like, you know, click play now for the uh, cat stream that I'm going out in the, uh, the Four Seasons room. Elizabeth has that started. And so it's going, you won't have to wait for anything. Just hang tight and we'll be right there. All right, so we'll be right there. We love you.